For many struggling with mental illness or addiction, spending months in the county jail can turn into a death sentence. On average, those in jail are four times more likely to die by suicide. It's a problem experts say that is only getting worse during the pandemic. In reporting on this difficult subject, there are details and images that may be unsettling for some viewers. Here's Tom Lydon of the Fox 9 Investigators. From the outside, newlyweds Maria and Joshua Fury looked like the perfect couple. The illusion shattered in May of last year when Maria was reported missing. The majority of these cases, it's the person that they with. From the start, detectives became suspicious of the husband. His story just didn't seem to add up. So is there any reason for me to be looking into you that you made her disappear? Nothing. I love my wife. Okay, so you didn't do anything to her? Because it'd be better if you told me now. Because if we find out later, then it's going to be a different story. Make sense? Okay. A few hours later, in a search of the couple's Maple Grove home, police found Maria's body in a crawl space underneath the home. Fury told detectives they'd had a fight over an ex-boyfriend. He snapped her neck, then suffocated her with a plastic bag. At that point, I thought about just killing myself, too. Probably should have. I don't just to live. So your plan was to kill yourself? Okay. I feel like I can be normal, but then I'm not normal. Mm -hmm. In the hours after his confession, detectives watched the undoing of Joshua Fury. While being booked and fingerprinted, he found it difficult even to sit upright. Fury's ex-wife warned detectives Josh is very conscious of how he presents himself and it would be extremely likely that he would attempt suicide rather than face a trial. Maple Grove police told the Hennepin County Jail of Fury's high potential for suicide. Fury's placed on suicide watch, jail staff checking on him randomly around every 15 minutes. He was making delusional statements, hallucinating, and said he would kill himself if given the chance. Five weeks later, after pleading guilty to murder, he's taken off suicide watch due to good behavior and moved to a different part of the jail for those with mental health issues. But he was still struggling. He told his parents he was having flashbacks and hearing voices, but that his new medication helps him realize the voices are not real. On July 25th, he talks briefly to his parents before returning to his cell. At 6.45, a guard briefly looks in and sees Fury standing on the left side of the cell, his back against the wall, his eyes closed. The guard said that wasn't unusual. Sometimes inmates just take a moment to themselves. The guard moves on. 26 minutes later, the same guard sees Fury in the exact same position. This time, he sounds an alarm. Fury had used a bed sheet to hang himself from a smoke detector. He dies a week before he would have been sentenced for murder. According to the investigation by the Minnesota Department of Corrections, there were no rule violations by the jail, even though another guard said he would have been alarmed if he had seen Fury in that same position. But Fury's suicide was hardly unusual. In the last five years, there have been 63 deaths in Minnesota County jails. 33, more than half, were suicides. Seven of those suicides were at the Hennepin County Jail. Why do you think the numbers are so high for your jail for suicide? Well, we're the largest jail by about three times. Sheriff Dave Hutchinson says the numbers don't reflect attempted suicides or self-harm events his jail staff actually prevent. 20 interventions so far this year and as many as 169 saves in previous years. Mentally ill people, people suffering from mental health crisis do not belong in jail. They belong in care facilities that don't exist so they can have talk therapy, they can get medication, they can get school programs, job placement. We're doing it backwards now. How many of the folks here at the Hennepin County Jail do you believe would be better suited to be in an environment outside the jail? I would say 20% or more. People like Najakan Powell, 
who hung himself after he was brought over from a hospital psych unit. His underlying crime, a probation violation for not taking his medication. The state investigation found a 37-minute gap in one of his welfare checks at the jail. And that's a chronic problem. Welfare checks that were missed, late, or simply done too quickly were cited by state investigators in the suicides of Gabriel Farnsworth, Robert Kellermeyer, Miguel Garcia, and Tristan Keyes. These people need our help. They don't need to be punished and sitting in jail. Sheriff Hutchinson says the pandemic has only made things worse, so he's made changes, adding two mental health nurses to a medical staff from Hennepin Health, a suicide risk assessment upon intake, medication-assisted treatment for those in withdrawal from opioid addiction, and increasing health and welfare checks to every 25 minutes, state law is 30, and checking for signs of life. But the reality is, it's still a jail. The jail should be saved for people who we are scared of, not for people where we have no other place to put them. Michelle Deitch is a national expert on jail conditions. Jails have become really a um, the largest holding facility for people with mental illness in the country. And there are uh, so many people that really should never have been in jail in the first place, but they are especially vulnerable to the risks of suicide. The problem may be even worse in greater Minnesota. Consider what happened to Brett Huber. Brett had a lot of gifts and a lot of drive and terrible demons with his addiction. A staff member on Capitol Hill, Brett's ambition was matched only by a debilitating depression. He would self-medicate, his father says, with the designer drug MDMA. It was a psychotic break, I believe. He believed somebody was trying to kill him. He called me. I urged him on the phone, Brett, just stay there. They're not trying to hurt you. They're trying to help you. Brett fled the hospital, stole a couple cars, and ended up on I-94, holding a Bible, shirtless, on top of a semi. No question that police were dealing with a mental health crisis there. No question. Absolutely no question. But when Brett got to the Todd County Jail, there was no mental health assessment. He spiraled. On surveillance video, you can see him trying to hide from imaginary monsters. To his father, the deputies appear to be grinning. A judge ordered a psych evaluation, but Brett never got one. After three months in jail, he woke up one afternoon and calmly twisted a sheet into a rope and hung himself. Jail deputies told state investigators they were too busy to watch the video feed. By the time a guard came by, 12 minutes later, he was dead. Nobody has a get out of jail free card from drug addiction or mental health. We have to do better. Doing better will fall to the Department of Corrections, which inspects and licenses county jails. Clearly, you believe DOC was not quite doing enough when it comes to regulating and enforcing the rules for the yeah. county jails. We did not hit the mark uh, in terms of carrying out our regulatory responsibility. And, um, and I believe that some of uh, the jails did not hit the mark in terms of compliance with the standards. DOC Commissioner Paul Schnell is now asking the legislature for one and a half million to increase safety and oversight over county jails and to hire more inspectors and increase transparency. He also wants to see psychological autopsies of those who commit suicides to see if they could have been prevented. The first period of time when people are incarcerated can be one of the a really high risk time for them. So how do we make sure um, that, uh, that, that we're uh, giving particular attention to that, these critical times and doing a really good thorough assessment when people come in? What are you seeing out there that seems to be really effective in jails at preventing suicide? The intake screening process is absolutely critical. Um, the people that do that intake screening at the jail need to be trained in what to look for, who is most at risk. But jails are just part of a bigger picture. What's become a revolving door of hospital psych units, jails, and police. Sheriff Hutchinson sees it in the headlines every day. Yesterday in Buffalo, well, what could we have done? This guy obviously has some issues with, with painkillers and mental health, and he shouldn't have a gun. 
well, we're going to talk about it for two weeks. We'll be upset about it for two weeks. And then the same thing will happen again where we'll forget about it. For Brett Huber and so many others struggling with addiction and mental illness, it's a system that seems almost designed to fail. You look at what happened to my son, it's, it's just kind of like, it's the obvious case of what we have doesn't work, and it's time to do better. For the Fox 9 Investigators, I'm Tom Lighton.